Hello everyone, this is Betsy from Ideas Times 2. Welcome back to our channel. We are super excited that you've joined us. Um, we had a little giveaway recently and it was just fun to uh, celebrate all of our subbies, so we're thankful for that. So today I have a tutorial for you and it's how to make this um, TN folio. Um, and we're making it out of envelopes. So all you need for this are three of same or similar sized um, envelopes. Um, these are craft and so they're pretty sturdy and I just made them with the envelopes, no um, like reinforcing papers to go with it. So these are nice and sturdy. Uh, and then two smaller ones that are around the same um, height as the width of this is about the same height as those, similar. So that's all we need. We need three large-ish envelopes and two smaller ones. So these are seven and a quarter by five and a quarter, seven and a quarter by five and a quarter, and these are five and a quarter, obviously, by about three and three quarters. So you can make them with uh, whatever size you have, as long as these three are similar in size and these two are similar in size. So. Um, I did get these from very recently from Hobby Lobby. So these are Paper Studio brand, and I love them. They're so thick and sturdy. Uh, so they were on clearance, and that's why I got them because I thought, well, how can you go wrong with craft colored uh, envelopes? <laughs> so, so I did get them, and I don't regret it because they're they're very nice. If your envelopes are not as sturdy, you may want to reinforce them with cardstock. Either gluing them on the in, gluing cardstock on the inside as sort of a liner, or just gluing it on top on the outside. Either way, so I'm going to show you how to make this. But first of all, I want to show you um, what it is here. So it has two inserts, and each insert has around 40 um, pages, and I have a closure. I have a fabric spine. Here's the elastics uh, holding in the. TNs and here's the back. The TN inserts, I should say, that's uh, the elastics holding them in. So I have a rope twine closure uh, through some through a couple of different eyelets here on the front, and then I just kept it uh, closed. Instead of hanging a key or something, I decided something different. And here's a rusted bulldog clip, so or binder clip, binder clip. So the inside is like this, and I just wanted to show you. So it has um, a tuck spot here. Okay, and then it has our two inserts. I just have, well, I used another envelope too. Um, um, used all kinds of different miscellaneous papers on those. So those are just as in TN fashion, you can remove them. And I didn't bind these, they're just loose papers. And in the back, we have a multi envelope um, folio, flipping, flipping folio. Not a flipping folio, a flipping folio. <laughs> that makes sense. All right, so I have a button and string closure here with um, these brads. These are just like decorative brads. I've had them in my stash forever. Um, I guess I bought them because I liked them and I never used them. So I was super happy I could have a chance to use them. So this one flips up and I don't have this folio 100% done. So you'll see some blank uh, spaces here, but I wanted to get this done enough to show you what it should uh, what it could possibly look like. So this flips up and there is a tuck spot right here. This flips down and there's a tuck spot here. Okay, And then this is a tuck spot. You can see the envelope shapes I have here. Okay, And then this folds out like this. And there you can see my envelopes. They're not, they're naked. There's a tuck spot there, and a, a tuck spot here, okay? This is actually a tuck spot right here as well. This is the one I showed you already. This is sort of the cover of this. And then you can open it this way, and there aren't any tuck spots. You can make your own little pockets and tuck spots on this, 
Okay, so then this just folds in like this, or you could fold it like this too, either way. And then the sort of protector flaps come down like this, it holds everything together. And I just had a button and a string, as I mentioned, and then the back, which we've already shown. So, so that's it. I'm going to leave this here because I might refer to it. I probably will. I probably refer to that off and on. So the first thing. All right, the first thing is I wanted to show you the envelopes without any inking, but I'll probably go off camera and ink these up. Actually, actually, I don't need to ink them. I can ink them later. So the first thing we're going to do is make our cover. We're going to just take two of our larger envelopes. Now you notice these have giant flaps. I'm going to just use those. I use them sort of as a decorative element on the front and back. So I'm going to use those for that. If your envelopes happen to have a shorter um, flap, then just use them as they are. But um, um, you know, you can still have a sort of a decorative element on the front too, so it'll just look different. So you, they don't necessarily have to have the giant triangular shaped flap. They can just be the straight across flaps or the more rounded looking ones. So the first thing we're going to do is do some scoring. We're going to score on all of our envelopes, so we might as well just do it all at one time. So what's going to happen? is these envelopes are going to go together like this and this is going to make our spine here. So we're going to need to score some lines to get those all straight and lined up. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take my envelope and butt it up against the side with my flap coming out to the right here. just hold it there and then I'm score at one inch so our spine is one inch okay so just gonna go ahead and fold that so you can see it so now we have the large flap within with a one inch um, what will become our spine do the same thing with this one but this up against the edge the left edge hold it in place because it's gonna wanna, it's gonna wanna move on you, and score it at one inch. If I could practice what I preach, right? <laughs> I just need to hold it, hold it in place. All right. And I guess I would wait to ink everything until after you get these folded and your other ones scored. So I guess scoring would be the first thing and then you could ink all your edges, fronts, backs, spines, all the stuff. Okay, so there's those two. The rest of the um, envelopes are just gonna be scored an eighth of an inch. I'm just gonna hold it in the middle. I have, I don't know if you can see it, but I have a, a mark here that's I just marked with pencil so it's a little darker. So I'm going to hold my flap edge against that. That would be a much easier way to do it. I should have done that with the other ones. And score an eighth of an inch away from the line that's already there, the fold that's already there. So, so now you're going to have a little spine just like that. So do that on all of these. And just an eighth of an inch is all we need. We want to be able to fill up our pockets. So we need a little bit of a gusset. So hold all of our stuff. And even on this one, just a little eighth inch. Okay, and then we'll be done with that scoreboard. Okay, then I would ink all the edges. And I think I'm not going to do that right now, just for time's sake. Okay. All right, so but we can set aside the two small ones and the one big one that have the eighth inch um, spines. We're going to put those aside and we're going to put these two together. So we're going to butt these up 
like this. I'm going to line up our two spines. So one envelope uh, will be off to the right, one envelope portion will be off to the left, and our flaps meet in the center, and our spine is going to overlap. So what we're going to do is just glue those together. Um, yeah, and it doesn't matter at this point what's front and what's back. Let me get my glue cleaned off a little bit there. Now, my, my we're going to reinforce this to But my um, my my flap here has such a deep angle that you'll see what I mean in a minute. But these these won't be perfectly straight. See what I mean, right? Right? Right there. There's a little dip because because my angled pockets. But it doesn't matter because we're gonna get that nice and. We're going to line these up nicely. Okay, so now you can see the book shape, right? The, the flap that's sticking out is going to be our front. So there's the front already. Let me look at this real quick. What did I do with that flap? We'll just take a look. I tucked it inside. <laughs> No big deal. So we're going to take this flap. And I think gravity will pretty much keep it, but we're going to go ahead and give it a little bit of glue. And then tuck that inside. That will reinforce the back. Give it another layer of protection right there. And we don't need that flap for any of our connectings, right? Okay. Sorry about that. I totally forgot what that was. Okay, so now this part with the flap on the outside of the envelope, that's going to be our front. All right, so now we have a front. Um, we will just go ahead and reinforce this spine right now. So I, what I did is, since I put eyelets in here and it's going to have elastic, I went ahead and put a little Tyvek, just a little line of Tyvek here. So I'm going to do that. I put brown on the ends just in case it shows, but it it shouldn't show at all, but there's no harm. Alright, so there's a little tie back, little reinforcement there. Okay. And this is the reason why that little dip right there is not gonna make a difference. You know, it might not make a difference anyway. It looks kinda cool. But I went ahead and reinforced this one more time by putting um, a strip, a cardstock, and this isn't the only way it's going to be reinforced either because we're going to put fabric on the outside too. And I just like to say the configuration of these envelopes can go so many ways. So if you, you find a different um, way to do it that you like, go ahead and do that. All right, so I am going to, just to give this a little bit more reinforcement, I'm going to put a little bit, this is a strip, a one inch strip of cardstock. Okay, and I'm just going to put that, you can use, this is a double sided, so. So I could do it either way because I'm going to cover it up with fabric anyway, so it doesn't matter. But it does sort of matter for here, so. Put that there, now we're going to flip this over, see what I mean about the, uh, the little dip on the end not making a difference because I'll just fold this over and now I have a straight edge there. Which will probably be better since it's a TN, it'll have some eyelets there. But you don't even have to make a TN, you can sew some signatures directly into that spine. That would be great too, so you can make it however you would like. I thought it was fun just to have a TN and make it uh, reusable. and You could use this for so many things. Alright, so then I'm going to cover up, because this will show now, 
on the inside so I am going to put a strip of cardstock over the top of that just to cover it all up. I think at first I didn't make this the right size because I'm just going to not measure and just cut it off. So there we go there, there, and give that a clip, clip that off. All right, perfect. All right, so now that spine is nice and secure. And I made the, I said one inch, I made it slightly smaller than one inch so that these will still bend easily. So it was probably more like 15 sixteenths of an inch or something like that because it was not too much smaller but it was a little bit so loving that all right so ink all the edges um, all right now um, to make it easier in the next steps um, like before we put the fabric over the spine here um, you can go ahead and decorate your fronts and backs I just found it it worked out better for decisions like a closure decision if you need to put an eyelet through this now this is going to be decorated and ready to go so I just went ahead and got mine ready already For those types of things it's just nice to have this already ready that way you don't have to you're like oh no I should have decorated that first so we're just gonna go ahead and do that on the front this one on the back and you notice I have a flap on this decorated one that's coming I didn't I didn't wreck it yet <laughs> That is still coming with that that third larger envelope okay so now these are decorated in case we need to put in an eyelid or something we are now ready for that okay so now we have that you could also do this so all I did for this flap and just to, just to reinforce this and make a little sturdier I cut out a piece exactly the same size as that flap and all I did was I laid this down on a piece of paper and just traced out the shape just traced it out and cut it out and then you'll have an exact um, exact measurement glue it glue it oh the other thing I wanted to mention too is if you want to sew so um, I did not want to sew my envelopes. You certainly could without a problem. You'd have to do it before you assemble anything. Um, but it will make your spaces smaller, um, which is fine. So you could do it that way. Um, I just chose to sort of sew around my decorations before I glued them on. Same with this. I would just sew around this before I glued it on. Okay. So um, so there's that. I don't think I need to do this right now, so I'm just going to leave that. Okay, so those are decorated, ready to go in case we need to put our eyelets in. Um, so I did not put an eyelet directly through the envelope because that would also, you know, leave a... I guess you could undo the envelope, unglue it, and then put your eyelet in and then cover it up with something to make it smoother. Um, I'd, or just put it through both of these layers, but it would it would inhibit your room and stuff, so I decided not to do that. What I did instead was um, I put an eyelet through this flap, and then I put an eyelet just through my decoration. So I guess this does make it harder. Um, maybe we shouldn't have done that yet, but it's okay because I can also like this piece is just glued on right so I could just glue another piece on top of here put an eyelet in it and then glue it on so um, so anyway it's it's worth it to think about your closure now so that you know exactly what you're doing with your decorations and 
the size of your envelope. Um, for example, if you poke something all the way through here. So, good thing to think about now. All right. Oh, yes, I'm looking at my notes and I realize now what I was talking about. Okay. All right, so there's that. The next thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to uh, decorate the front of these envelopes, these smaller ones. And I forgot to actually get my stuff ready for this. Um, but I would definitely decorate these. So I'll be back in with uh, some pieces for that. So one of these small envelopes will be the flap is going to be glued down to the top of this inside. This is the front, so this is the inside. So one of the flaps will be glued to the top like this, and then one will be basically upside down, right? This will be glued, this flap will be glued to the bottom. So it's going to be like this, and those are going to be what surrounds your fold out. Um, I don't know what to call it exactly, but north and south, north and south flips. So those are north and south flips. So when we decorate those, it's going to go like this, right? This one will be right side up, this one will be upside down. So if you have directional paper, just keep that in mind. Um, I think, I was going to say mine's generic, but it's not. I've got one with numbers on it, so I want those to be facing the right way. The reason why we're decorating these first is for closure. The same thing, the same reason why we need to think about it ahead of time for the other the front and back cover. Same thing, closure. So I'm going to put this here. And I will probably wind up collaging these up a little bit more, but we'll need at least the background. Okay, and so this one. We'll go like this. Okay, so at this point before you glue them down you can decide. Um, so on mine I did do a bread which I think turned out really well. Um, this goes down deep into the envelope so it's a little tricky. You have to kind of put your hand down there and get the prongs spread out and also I um, yeah they're both deep inside there but I also put um, a circle of paper it doesn't have to be a circle but a circle of paper over the uh, prongs so that when you slip things in and out it's not going to get hooked on the prongs so that's the reason why you would want to um, decorate these up first Okay, so I'm not going to do that right now just for time's sake, but now would be the time to decide your closure. Um, another thing you could do, which would be super easy, but you would still need to decide it before you glue these, is to put um, a ribbon or um, sorry silk or which is ribbon too, right? Underneath the flap before you glue them down like this. You'll have to be aware of your um, your opening here, but you could just glue a ribbon down there and glue them down. And then when it comes time to close these up, then you would just tie your ribbon in a bow uh, like this. So that's another way you can do a closure. Um, I'm probably gonna do brads again, so I'm gonna go ahead and glue these down just so you can see exactly what I'm talking about here. So um, the when you have it closed like this, you're going to put the glue just on this first line. Um, make sure that that second line, which is actually the original fold for this, um, is doesn't get glue on it. So you just want to put it on just the flap, what's left of the flap here. So we're going to do that. Put the glue all the way up to that uh, fold and all the way to the bottom of that flap. Okay. 
Okay, and then get it butted up right against both the right side and the top. Okay, and smooth it down. If you need to clip a little bit because your envelope opening is different than your flap, just flip, just go ahead and clip that. You could also uh, you could also leave just uh, glue on the three sides and have this as a little opening. You can do that too. I didn't didn't bother. I figured I had enough little spots, but you definitely could do that. So now we have a, a flip that goes north. <laughs> and then it has the little spine on it. And we're gonna do the exact same thing with the bottom, except it's gonna go south. I'm gonna make sure my fold line is nice and flat. Okay, just glue on the flat part, what's left of the flat part. Okay. And then we're gluing the flap and lining up, lining up that score line with, or that fold line with the left side, or the, excuse me, the right side. I don't know if I said left before, hope not. And the bottom, just make sure it's nice and flush. And there you've got your little spine on there. So those are all set and ready to be filled and ready to hold our, our uh, flip out nice and snug. Okay, so the next part is um, a, this large envelope. Am I short in envelope? I think I'm short in envelope. All right, so this gets glued on. <laughs> I am short in envelopes, so when I told you at the beginning you only need three of these, you need four. It's so silly. Okay, so this one, it already has our score mark on it, and we're gonna glue just a one, depending on what you want, okay, but just glue a line of glue right up into that score, the first score line that you, when you're holding it like this, that first score line that you see just right there, okay? And then that's gonna be glued on underneath. So we're gonna glue it right over the back of our book. So, and then line it up top to bottom, and then just put it a titch, tiny tiny bit away from the score line so that there's room to fold so make sure you've got enough room to actually fold it over the top there we go and we're gonna get our other envelope which I am so sorry I did not tell you that you need four so for this one it's gonna glue, get glued on like this What we're gonna do, you can do this however you like. Um, I'm gonna cut this down. So there is one thing we do need to cut. So we're gonna cut this down. Now, your envelopes may be different, but this is what this is the way I'm figuring it out. So I'm gonna butt these up together like this. Okay. And then here's the, the bottom most part of my opening. So I'm just going to uh, fold it down a little ways. This gives me another little pocket, but it'll cut off this excess here. And then just line up your envelope in your cutting tool or just cut it with scissors and just cut that right off. So now I have Now I've got, I'm going to glue this here, and then I'll have another little tuck spot here, as well as this tuck spot right here. You can do it however you like. You could cut this even shorter and just make it into a hinge. So in order to make it, um, 
into a tuck spot. We won't be gluing the whole thing, right? We're just going to be gluing three sides. So I'm just going to glue this little um, ang angled part and then just right here and then up the angle again. Okay, so just going to do that and that gets glued on right there. Line it up with the edge of your envelopes. Oh, and I forgot to score this. Okay. I'm going to take this off and don't do what I do. I'm going to line this up and score it, even though now I have glue to deal with. There we go. Sorry about that mistake. That was... <laughs> I checked it and double checked it. I'm like, yeah, I've got all my stuff, but no, I did not. Now I'm going to have to use my glue eraser and erase the glue that landed on this little spine here. But it's all right. It's all right. We'll get it fixed up. So, sorry about that, guys. All right, let's try again. My glue, I need new glue. This is at the point where it just sort of globs up. So now I'm gluing just up to that score mark that I just made. The one that makes the flap just a tiny bit smaller. All right, now I'm going to glue it on here. Very important to put those little spines in, otherwise your book is going to get um, sort of crammed and then you won't have enough room and it might put extra strain on the folds. So it's good to give it a little wiggle room. Alright, so we're going to get that all. And then it does look really great to have these inked, so make sure to ink your stuff. Okay, so now we have a little tuck spot right there as well. So we put a little something in there. Okay, there. So now we have our completed folio cover, <laughs> the basic bones, right? So you can fold this, um, as I showed you with the one that's done already, you can fold this like this, or if you prefer to have like a zigzag, just fold this backwards like that. And there you have it. I preferred it like this but it's defi it definitely works because we have our built-in spines, right? It definitely works to do it like this as well. And then these protector, like north-south flaps come over like this, and then you've got whatever closure you're gonna use. Um, so then the next step is to um, decorate it up. Decorate it up. Um, put fabric on the spine which I already did because <laughs> my camera was off and I didn't realize it was not recording. Um, so all I did was I took a scrap of fabric. Um, I, I, I made it the width of the spine plus about a half inch on each side, just a, a long triangle, or I mean rectangle. And I just took my Fabri-Tac glue and put it down on the spine in a very thin, we don't want big globs of glue. So let me just show you here. Now, you wouldn't necessarily need the fabric, I don't think. I like the way it looks, and it does give it um, another layer of sturdiness. But I don't think you'd need to, necessarily, because I think with the cardstock reinforcement, I think it's it's real, real sturdy the way it is, but I kind of like the way that looks. And what I did here, even though these flaps, these flaps are not meant to, like, be bent all the way back so I just went ahead and glued this down onto this part and then this goes onto the flap so uh, your envelope may come all the way and so it would look it would look uh, more even um, but these flaps really aren't meant to, f to flip over too much like on um, let me put this back together real quick um, like on this one, 
Um, this is meant to just sort of be a little tuck spot for maybe a tag. And the same with this. It's, it is loose like this, but it's just meant to be a tuck spot. This one I would probably put like a strip of paper or cardstock, I mean, here. Just like collage this here and then leave that open for a tuck spot. Or you could just, you could glue this down too. It doesn't really matter. But I think it's kind of fun to maybe uh, stick a tag down there. Um, and the same with this one. So, so you can see this is loose in those two eyelets like that. So make sure you get your, you know, your closure figured out um, before you decorate it up too much. Um, so, so this one I'm probably going to do the same way as I did that one. I really like the way that turned out. So then decorate it up after you get your spine fabric, if that's what you want, then decorate it up, get your flaps decorated inside all, all your collaging and um, I did put I did put on this one I did put a backing on you know, this blank part here so decorate it up have fun put tags and journal cards and index cards and all kinds of fun stuff in there and um, it would be awesome it's gonna be awesome yes all right, and then also we're going to need to put eyelets. I just put my eyelets a quarter inch apart, a couple at the top there, a couple at the bottom, and um, put my elastics in for a traveler's notebook. So you can see it here. I've got those. It just goes back and forth like that on the top and the bottom and then you stick in your your inserts for a TN but if you want to make it a regular um, junk journal then go ahead and sew your signatures directly into the spine so that your um, your strings will be showing on the outside that would be super cute as well so lots of ways you can do this lots of ways to even do these envelopes um, seriously you can you can like these are these are basically like um, back of the envelope side up all the way across you could you know flip them uh, so that you've got the back of the envelope here the front of the envelope here etc um, you can do so many things you could uh, since we did we just have an eighth of an inch spine you don't want to add too many more envelopes to this but you certainly could do a few here and there I think it should be just fine so fun design lots of options um, this would be great for a Christmas gift or um, even your own Christmas uh, journal keeping track of things and putting in receipts and um, having tags available for a uh, little presents when you need them and writing down uh, your Christmas lists and stuff like that so that kind of thing or happy mail um, I don't know I think they're lots of fun and I hope you make one give us a try uh, it you need four, four, four large envelopes two smaller ones and scrap paper and you got it you got it made so super super happy about this if you make one Put it in our Facebook group. We, we have a Facebook group and we would just love to see your projects. Um, I'll leave all the links where you can find us down below, below. And we are so happy that you joined us today. Thank you so much. Take care and we'll catch you in the next video. Goodbye.